Hello people of YouTube, Rich from PC Games in here and Curse of the Vampire Coast is out for Total War Warhammer 2. To help you get the most out of the new faction, we've got a couple of interviews with the designers to bring you. Uh, they'll talk tactics, strengths, weaknesses, ways to counter them in multiplayer if that's where you're at, and they'll share some anecdotes of their favourite units. Uh, stick around at the end for a particularly amusing one about a bloated corpse gone awry. So enjoy, give us a like rating if you do enjoy it, and subscribe for plenty more PC gaming and Total War videos on PC Games N. In particular, next week we'll have a couple of features about the design of the Necrofex Colossus and other units. Uh, so thanks very much for watching as always, um, and we'll see you next time. Take care. general sort of go-to tactics? My go-to tactics is it's, it's a war of attrition. From the, from the outset, it doesn't matter what army I'm fighting against, I'm viewing that battle as a war of attrition. Uh, I've got more men than them, typically. Um, I've got the ability to summon men, uh, or zombies, yeah. onto the field. So I'm able to trade, I'm able to sort of like take losses and not let that phase me. Like I can lose a whole unit and the battle isn't lost. So um, with that in mind, what I would typically do is have your sort of Prometheans in the front line and then saturate them with zombies as well so that it's hard to get to the Prometheans because you've got all these sort of zombies in the way. So a fodder slash Promethean front line and back that up with uh, <coughs> the multiple range units that we have available because um, they can deliver a lot of armor piercing sort of damage. And deck gunners, right? Deck gunners, um, yeah, your sort of gunnery mobs, uh, Queen Bass, all manner of artillery and uh, you just hold it's basically this sort of like kind of cold grip of death <laughs> you hold them and then you just blast them to pieces that's the general strategy of vampire coast army i'd say what i really like to do is have a lot of artillery um, and then just kind of yeah have a, a really rabble of a front line and just send them in and kind of just fire my artillery and just hope to god that my front line holds basically because um, yeah they have such good ranged units that You've really just got to rely on now. It's definitely it's speed. It's a hundred percent is speed. Like it's um, if you set up in a very like condensed sort of very organised formation and you keep to your formation, you've got a good strength. But if you've got a fast moving enemy or an aggressive enemy that's trying to like, pull you apart and you don't hold together well enough, then you're going to be in for some trouble because your firepower is very very squishy, very vulnerable. So if one enemy charge gets in there, then it could be game over. So uh, yeah, it's keeping information, keeping sort of your, your range units protected. Uh, that's the sort of, I think that's the crux of the Vampire Coast roster for sure. Vampire Coast infantry, they aren't exactly the, the greatest. They're not renowned for their sort of stiff backbone. So with the Prometheans, these armored sort of crabs are, these are, perfect for uh, fulfilling that sort of um, bulwark style role for the unit so they're able to sort of hold the line really give it a sort of like a solid spine um, so that um, then you can play around that and uh, keep your enemy at bay keep them at arm's length and then sort of deliver that sort of uh, cannon fire and musket fire and really sort of deal that punishment to them so they're there as sort of a bulwark basically probably yeah just kind of standard melee infantry i guess um, just that ability to have a, I guess, a, a reliable front line. Um, your front line is kind of unreliable. Um, you've got your zombies, obviously, things like that. G generally weak units um, that you can't rely on so much. Um, so I think that's what they're lacking. We kind of knew that we really wanted this to be a, a firepower orientated faction. Um, and kind of with that, then you want something to hold the line. Um, so we don't really have these kind of units that you'd expect, kind of like infantry units that are our front line. So you really need something that can kind of keep the enemy at bay. So that's where we wanted our monsters to kind of come in and be that role essentially. So you have things like the Leviathan, that are just massive armored tanks essentially, that can really just keep the enemy at bay while your, your artillery and your, your gun line essentially just rains damage in. But if you've got a fast moving enemy or an aggressive enemy that's trying to like pull you apart and you don't hold together well enough, then you're gonna be in for some trouble because your firepower is very very squishy, very vulnerable. So if one enemy charge gets in there, then it could be game over. So uh, yeah, it's keeping information, keeping sort of your, your range units protected. Uh, that's the sort of, I think that's the crux of the Vampire Coast roster for sure. Um, if you can get around their back line and kind of avoid their front line, then they're probably gonna be in a lot of trouble. Really good magic users would be good to get away all of that chaff, all of the zombies, things like that. Because um, yeah, if you can get rid of their kind of volatile front line, then they're going to be in for a bad time. I 
think it will slow it down slightly. Like it's definitely sort of, again, it's an attritional faction, so you're able to sort of uh, slow the battle down to your pace and dig, um, engage in your terms. Uh, they, they play similarly to the dwarves, so it's definitely something that will slow the, the pace of a battle down. But um, also, um, they come equipped with the extra powder ability, so the first few shots of um, a Vampire Coast army will deal more damage than the subsequent ones. So it will that will dictate how you approach uh, the, uh, the the Vampire Coast. Like so, if you approach them head on, you're going to deal. You're going to like suffer a lot more casualties. So it's a different army to approach. Essentially, it's difficult to sort of um, take them head on, basically. Right, and you 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 advocate sort of moving around the flanks with something yeah, mobile absolutely. like the Wood Elves. Or Tr yeah, trying to keep them off balance and make sure that they don't get that sort of initial big volley off on you before you charge. So you want to be running around the flanks with like cavalry or warhounds, or harassing them from a greater range to sort of bring them to you. Um, well, so presumably, not many factions will be capable of that. Though I mean, the Queen Bess mm. is has a huge range. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you're going to take some casualties, but it's a case of positioning and making sure that you're not like advancing headlong into that sort of fire. Um, Queen Bess is very powerful, but um, it's, it's a lot of investment for what is essentially a small zombie crew. So they, if you can get into combat with them, they won't last very long. Definitely the Colossus, yeah. for sure. Um, he's just such a, a fun unit, just in general, just how his animations work, how he uh, operates mechanically. Like I, I think his escape mechanics are very fun to sort of play around with, because uh, that was something that the animators worked quite hard on, to, to, have, to have the zombies literally fall from his uh, sort of uh, chassis. Um, and uh, yeah, just his, his overall firepower, because it's not just his cannon, he's got like the riders on him as well, so he's got five zombies with uh, sort of uh, rifles on top of him, so he's always a threat, so definitely my favourite. It's, um, it's, it's the workhorse of the, uh, the Vampire Coast roster, it's their sort of one of their apex units, so it's, it's sort of a, a, a jack of all trades. One of the Necropex Colossi in the trailer had a flamethrower. Yes, is that's that the Gallows Giant. Um, Gallows Giant. Yeah, he's uh, the this, this special one. He's um, <clears throat> more geared towards close combat than the, as his other sort of cousins. Um, he's not got as great a range and he doesn't fire whilst moving but he's able to sort of um, project flame over your lines and sort of incinerate in a sort of ranks of infantry but in close combat that's where he excels One bloated corpse um, got 73 kills I yeah. think like, can you talk a little bit about the role of bloated corpses and where that idea came from? It was um well, we're, we're sort of drawing upon the source material for this from uh, a White Dwarf, and uh, this was a unit within that roster, and it was just something that's interesting for Total War because it's not something that we typically do. We, we don't do units that, that that just trade like that's like a you know they they'll deal damage, they'll take damage, and then one will retreat. But in this situation, we've got a unit which will just literally destroy itself and take the enemy with it. So it. I think it provides a lot of interesting gameplay sort of aspects where it can um, it can be a, a complete waste of resources or it can be an incredibly good use of resources. Yeah. So it's, it's a high risk, high reward uh, type of unit. Um, it rewards players for hiding it well, keeping it in the backfield until late in the game where the enemy can't respond to it or... Um, it, We're in a forest. Or in a forest, yeah, you hide it in the forest, keep it in the back, or hiding it behind your crabs, your, behind your Prometheans, uh, yeah. behind your Leviathan, and sort of blocking line of sight so that the enemy can't um, get contact with it or shoot it from a range. So it's, it's sort, sort of like an, a mini escort mission for, for your uh, players. Yeah, I mean, we, we have so many different kind of units that have different roles in this roster that we've never done before. Yeah. Um, obviously, like a suicide unit is something we've never done before. Um, so yeah, I think like I did, a lot of people will kind of have a bit of a challenge getting used to them and the kind of new roles that they play. And obviously then you can get caught out by the AI who kind of might do some smart things like flying into you and you know, taking out your bloated corpses. Like the first time I ever fought against the Vampire Coast, um, I was the Vampire Coast as well, so it was, it was a yeah, mirroring battle. And uh, I had one of the bloated corpses in my army and I was basically about to try out all of the units, see what they were like. Um, and yeah, one of the enemy units was um, a Felbat and he kind of flew straight over my army and into my bloated corpse and kind of blew up my back line <laughs> and uh, it was just a great moment where everything just started going wrong um, and I just, yeah, I really remember that battle as one that I really enjoyed because it was just so unique and different yeah. uh, so I hope when people get a chance to play the roster that they really feel that as well, that it's completely different. <laughs>